Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dew, and thank you for the prayers today and for the days ahead. You know, the scriptures teach us uh, to rejoice with those who rejoice, but it also reminds us to weep with those who weep. And while we can replace stuff, uh, we can't replace life. And we pray that people will make wise decisions now and that they'll be uh, taking all the measures that need to be taken. So thank you. So many of you here are Floridians. I know you've got family uh, back in the state that you're thinking about today. And uh, uh, we just are so thankful for uh, that uh, prayer of compassion and your love for them. And I just want to say a word before I begin uh, the message today of appreciation to Dr. Jamie Dew, his wife Tara, their family. Uh, what a blessing to New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary when God called Jamie to be here uh, to be your president and our president. And we're so thankful for New Orleans. I'm a grad here. Uh, I got two degrees. They, they were easier to get back in the day, I guess. You know, I don't know. But uh, I love this school and I'm so thankful for you, Dr. Dew. So we appreciate your leadership so very much here. This morning, I want us to focus upon the theme of dream again. Dream again. In the Old Testament, in the 126th Psalm, we read the entirety of that Psalm, six verses in that chapter. If you'll open God's Word there, and if you're able, uh, would you stand in honor of God's Word? Psalm 126, I'll be reading uh, the entirety of this Psalm. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. And they were declaring, the Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Father, we pray that your word would accomplish what you have sent it to accomplish here today. May we hear what the Spirit is saying into our lives, and may you challenge us in our lives to dream again. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. You remember when you used to dream? It was just a freshness about everything in your life and everything in your ministry. There was anointing that seemed to be upon your life, and all that you were doing under the leadership of the Lord, God's hand was powerfully upon there was a, a touch of the Lord, a fire that was just burning in your bones, an excitement. There was always anticipation and expectation about what God was going to do through your life. And you humbly walked in that path with the Lord. Every day was about living for Christ, not just existing. There was a pep in your step. There was a, a spark that was always in your heart about what God had called you to do and what God was allowing you to be a part of. Remember when you cease dreaming. Disappointments come in ministry and in life. They're real and they're hard. Maybe you went through some seasons of defeat. You're deflated. Things that you hoped, things that you thought, and all of that was pulled away. You're devastated by maybe the way you've been treated by a church or by the way that you've had experienced ministry. You have discouragement. Maybe distractions have pulled you away from that singular focus of being on mission for Christ. Even today, you feel some sense of being devalued. I want to urge you today to dream again. We're in a new day. We're in a new season. All across Christianity, all across the life of the church, filled with new opportunities. And many people are looking back and they're longing for what once was. But God is calling us to look ahead and to dream about what will be. For dreamers see before others see. And dreamers know before others know. And dreamers are going even before others are a part of that journey. Two years ago, Karen and I, my wife, we've been married now for 43 years, and on our 40th wedding anniversary, we went to France, and we took a, a river cruise, we went down the Seine River. And as we were going down the river, they were stopping at different villages and different places on the countryside just so we could kind of take in the beauty of that country. And one of the places that we were scheduled to stop was a, a little community called Giverny. As I read about it, this is the home place of Claude Monet. Claude Monet was a French Impressionist painter, 
And he purchased an undeveloped piece of property, 2.5 acres there in this countryside of Giverny. The property was a blank canvas for him, but he had a dream. He had a vision of what that property could become. He was a horticulturalist as well as a painter. And so he moved, began working over this property and he designed gardens and ponds and he was, he was growing particular plants and flowers and he was strategically positioning them across this acreage to accentuate and capture light based on the time of day. He painted the famous image of the water lilies and the light reflecting off the ponds and he lived at this farm from 1883 until his death. I was inspired by that because Monet was able to dream and to see what was yet to be. He went on a blank canvas and he designed and he planted accordingly. He knew what he wanted to paint that did not exist. And so he created that and he developed that on this site. Today, there are over 600,000 persons per year who visit those gardens in Giverny. And the paintings of Monet they are displayed at art galleries all over the world. And in 2016, a painting of Monet was auctioned for $81 million. Dreamers dream. And their dreams impact the world. Their dreams impact others. And, and across this room today, there are those who are dreamers, those who need to dream. The present and the future of legacy churches are in your hands. Dream again. Church planting is in your hands. Dream again. Church revitalization is in your hands. Dream again. Missionaries to unreached peoples, it is your call. Dream again. Bible translators, dream again. Teachers and leaders and servants and church replanting. The next great mission movement the next great awakening is a part of this very campus and where you are today if only we can dream again because we're not a defeated people but there is a defeated foe and our victory is found in the Lord Jesus Christ and so I want to encourage you today I know you're in the midst of tests, you're in the midst of Hebrew and Greek, and some of you need to dream again right now. You're in the midst of a lot of challenges all around you, trying to, to shuffle all the things that are in your life, and you know that God has called you to ministry, and you know that God has called you here. Don't lose the dream of what God is calling you to in terms of the future. And so why is it necessary that we're reminded? Why is it important that we are challenged to dream again? We need to be challenged because we all have shattered dreams. I have shattered dreams. I'm sure that you do as well. This entire psalm is about a season of shattered dreams in and around the covenant people of God, the very people of Israel. Seventy years in exile, brokenness, hurtfulness. They have been taken away from Jerusalem. They've been placed in captivity. They've been taken from their families, taken from their businesses, taken from the comforts of life, taken from everything that they thought was important, the glory of God. And they have been taken to a foreign land. And there in captivity, they knew pain. They knew pressure. They knew problems. They knew what a pandemic was all about. But in this moment, they see the power and they see the hand of God. God had not forgotten them. God had not quit on them. I'm sure there were times that they even thought, God, do you even know where we are? God, do you even care about who we are anymore? But God's plan was still intact. God's plan and purpose was still intact for these people. It has been said that God's when becomes our then. God's when becomes our then. When God moves, then. When God heals, then. When God leads, then. When God reveals, then. When God provides, then. When God blesses, then. And you can use every situation and every circumstance and every wrong of life as a reason for bitterness and anger, as a reason for blame for what you're missing in ministry. You can use all of that as an excuse for what you are not experiencing. You have a, a litany of shattered dreams. I thought I would be here by now. I thought I would have this by now. I thought I'd be serving in this capacity by now. I thought I'd be leading this by now. I thought my marriage would be like this by now. My career, my finances. I thought at this season in my life and ministry this is where I would be and you're dealing with shattered dreams 
and you focus more on what is not rather than what is. And your focus is more on why you cannot rather than why not. Recently on Father's Day, I received a text uh, from my daughter-in-law. Our, our youngest son and, and uh, our, this daughter-in-law, they were married at the beginning of this year. They've been dating for 10 years. I'm kind of like, let's get on with the program here. <laughs> it's time that we go ahead and move this thing to more official capacity. And, and has a beautiful wife, incredibly talented, extremely capable. But her story is one of shattered dreams. She was born in Russia. Her mother, at her birth, took her to an orphanage and gave her to the people there and walked away. She has no idea who her mother is, who her father is, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandma, grandpa, family. None of that's been a part of her life. And for eight years, she lived in this orphanage in Russia. Can you imagine what it was like for eight years? People come and they pick these children, this boy, this girl, these two, and leave, and you're still there. Eight years. There was a lady in Florida who somehow connected with this orphanage, and she adopted her at the age of eight years old and brought her back to Florida. She spoke Russian, and she's put in public schools in Florida. That's an experience that anyone would not want to be a part of, I assure you. But as I said, she's very independent. She works hard. She's completed university life. She's a lead nurse at a hospital. And on Father's Day, she wrote me this note. She said, Happy Father's Day. I hope you have an amazing day because you deserve it. Thank you so much for being the father that I've never had and doing all that you do for me and for us. And they recently shared with us that they're expecting our next grandson. And so we're very excited about that. It says in this passage, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Just as God's wind became her then, here God's wind is becoming their then. They are returning back to Jerusalem. They're returning back to the city of God, and they're dreaming again. They had lost their dream, and now all of a sudden a freshness of God, a power and presence of God that they had not experienced, they are experiencing at this moment as they are returning from the captivity back to Zion. Oh, let us remember that in Christ all things are possible. But when shattered dreams are around you, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't walk away. Don't minister from a dark place. The Bible says that weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The Bible reveals to us that he turns our ashes into his beauty. God's when becomes our then. Dream again. We also need to dream again because we have shuttered dreams. The hurricane is coming, <laughs> literally, and we're shuttering in Florida. If you're from the state, you know exactly what that means. You're putting up plywood over windows and you're, you're closing shutters that are operable. We shudder the dream. And so often in our lives, when the storms start coming at us, what we do, we shudder our life. We begin closing off. We, we close off the ways that God is going to work in our life. We close off the ways that God can move in our hearts. We begin to shut down. And I want to assure you that the challenges are always going to be present. There will never be a season in your life, no matter how good things are going, that there aren't challenges that are circling all around you. The pressures are coming. The naysayers are speaking. The defeatists are circling. The cynics are clamoring. The insecurities are, are surfacing. The storm clouds are gathering. And too often, our response is, shudder the dream. We begin to shut down. But this scripture reminds us that our mighty God has released us. And the joy of today is greater than the sorrow of yesterday. And the joy of today is greater than the unknown of tomorrow. Because remember, even in this passage, the psalmist is reminding them about the difficult place where they had been and which the people of Israel were found. But he says, remember, even when you were there, even when you were shattered, even when you were shuttering your dream, God had a purpose for you in that place. He said, seek the peace of the city. 
Seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. So even when we're in that place, God has a purpose in that. Even when we're in that place, God is teaching us. God is refining us. God is challenging us. God is molding us that we can move to a point where we can get past our shuttered dreams to dream again. And so now they're dreaming again. We're like those who dream. And notice the change in the atmosphere of their heart and of their life. Their mouth was filled with laughter. Their tongue was singing. The nations were saying about them, God's done great things for them. And they're they're responding back, the Lord's done great things for us. And we are glad. They're dreaming again. One of the lessons you're going to learn in ministry is this. I can't be everything. I can't do everything. I can't please everyone. I can't live by comparison. I can't serve by competition. I can't depend on compliments. And I certainly can't focus on social media. Because the same group or person who pat you on the back today will be the same group or person who's stabbing you in the back tomorrow. But I can be who God has created and gifted me to be for his glory. And I can choose to experience and to declare the glory of the Lord. I can choose for my mouth to be filled with laughter. I can choose my tongue to be filled with song. I can choose for my testimony to be declaring his greatness. I I can choose for my life to be filled with gladness. And in this season that we are in, in the life of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, churches must choose. And you must choose. We're either going to be a placeholder or we're going to be a stakeholder in kingdom ministry. And I hope you understand the difference between the two. Because placeholders are inward focused. But stakeholders are outward focused. Placeholders are consumed with budgets and buildings. But stakeholders are consumed with mission and ministry. Placeholders are escaping the culture. But stakeholders are engaging the culture. Placeholders are lifting up their hands, but it's in resignation and defeat. But stakeholders are lifting their hands in rejoicing and in declaration. Placeholders are grumbling and griping. But stakeholders are gaining and growing. Placeholders are giving up and giving out. But stakeholders are giving more and giving all. Placeholders are stuck. But stakeholders are unstuck. Placeholders are defending the status quo. But stakeholders, they are stating, let's go. Let's go and leverage everything that we have for the kingdom of God and to the glory of God Almighty. For God isn't finished with his church. He isn't finished with his people. He is the one who declared himself, Christ Jesus, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And he gives you and I the privilege of being part of that eternal kingdom mission and ministry. Shuddered dreams. We must dream again because we have shallow dreams. Shallow dreams. We, we, we just navigate to a safe place. <laughs> Over here, it's secure. It's a hiding place almost for my life. I begin to shallow those dreams. It's a place of little depth and little faith and little sacrifice and little demands and little commitment and and little resistance. We're content and we're meandering in the shallow water while God is calling you to the deep. Now within this passage, they're called to return to Jerusalem, rebuild the city, rebuild the temple. Go once again to Zion, the great place, the great holy place of God. It's a big request. But they understand we have a bigger God who is able to do all things. And God has a big request for this generation. And we must dream again. We must trust in a God who is bigger than. As we look at ourselves, I pray 
that you will take anything and everything that my generation has been a part of. And while we've had successes, we've had failures. While we've had victories, we've had losses. We've gone through many ups and downs and seasons and cycles. Don't try to recycle that. Don't try to rehash that. Instead, dream again about what God can do through you, how God can use your life, how God can take this generation and literally turn the world upside down to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. The psalmist says, deep calls unto deep. At the noise of your waterfalls, all of your waves and all of your billows have gone over me. How many of you watched the um, Olympics last summer? You remember that? It seems like a, 10 years ago now, doesn't it? You know, we, we watch it. We're just competitive in our household. I mean, I've got the greatest wife in the world. She loves to watch football games. My wife buys the MLB package so we can watch Major League, Major League Baseball. I mean, I'm a blessed man, I want to tell you. At my house. So we're watching the Olympics. And there's, a, there's a, 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 an athlete who's competing in the Olympics who's from the state of Florida. His name is Caleb Dressel. And Caleb Dressel swam competitively at the University of Florida, and he is, a, he is the fastest swimmer on the planet. He won five gold medals in the Olympics in swimming. He set Olympic records. He set world records. And so at the end of one of those events, he has swam, outpaced everybody in the pool. He's touched the wall. He spins around. He hops up on that rope that divides the lanes, which that's got to be a pretty athletic feat in and of itself, the way I look at it. And he holds up his arms like this. And, well, not like this. I mean, his arms look really good when he held them up. He had the Olympic rings tattooed on his, on his arm. I mean, he is the champion. He has set a world record. He set Olympic records. No one in the world can keep up in the pool with Caleb Dressel. And the network was prepared for one of those moments. And as he's there on that rope, arms raised, smiling, jubilant, joyous, they do a split screen on the television. And on the other side of that screen, they have a photograph of Caleb Dressel, who is from Green Cove Springs, Florida, and he is in a kiddie pool, and he has floaties on his arms. Now, that's quite a contrast. <laughs> Olympic champion and a baby in a pool with floaties. And as I saw that, it just spoke to me like this. At some point, at some point, he had to take off the floaties. At some point, he had to dive into the deep. At some point, he had to have faith to risk everything to excel in the very uh, competition that he was a part of. And it is time, it is time for the church to take off the floaties. It's time for believers to take off the floaties. And we must dive into the deep. That's exactly what we see in the last part of this passage of Scripture. Those who sow in tears, they're going to reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. There's always going to be a struggle. It's never going to be easy. Tears lead to joy. Weeping leads to bearing, sowing, and seed, and rejoicing, bringing the sheaves. There will be a struggle. It's never easy, but we must press on. We must dream, and we must dream again. In Galatians 6, 9, Paul will write, Let us not grow weary while doing good. <laughs> For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now, those of you who are taking mission classes right now, you know about a man who dreamed. In 1792, William Carey was a dreamer. He was willing to dream again. And he said to the people, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. And it launched the modern missions movement. So here is a dreamer in 1792 that even today we still look unto as one who had a vision, one who believed that the Lord could do all things and he called the church to be about the great commission and the ends of the earth are being touched today because of the passion and the dream that a man had within his heart. Oh, dream again. I live in the state of Florida as uh, Dr. Dew mentioned earlier and we're dreaming <laughs> We're trying to dream big in Florida. We live in a state, and I'm sharing this to you because I'm saying, come to Florida. We need you if that's God's will for you. We live in a state with 21 million people. 
300,000 people per year move into the state of Florida. There are over one million students on college campuses in our state. There are over three million students pre-K through 12 in schools in the state of Four million in that next gen in our state. And our pastors and our churches are dreaming. Last year, they planted 74 churches in the state of Florida. Amazing. And we give praise to God for that. 125 churches went through a revitalization process. We're grateful for that and more work to be done. Every year, Florida Baptist churches set and lead and, pre and present a pace for the Southern Baptist Convention and baptisms. And every year, between 11 to 12 percent of all the baptisms reported by the Southern Baptist Convention come through Florida Baptist churches. Our churches reported over 100,000 unique and strategic mission engagements, generosity through the cooperative program and great commission giving. We want to dream again because we are a state where we must be as churches, multicultural and multi-ethnic and multilingual and multi-generational and multi-locational. Our Florida Baptist family is identified like this, Hispanic, Haitian, Brazilian, Asian American, African American, Anglo, multi-ethnic, American Indian, Arabic, Asian Indian, Cambodian, Chinese, Deaf, Urdu, Pakistani, Punjabi, Pakistani, Caribbean, Ethiopian, Filipino, Hungarian. These are churches, Japanese, Jewish, Korean, Romanian, Russian, Slavic, Thai, Ukrainian, Vietnamese, Zomi Burmese, Bhutanese, Nepali, Portuguese. That's the Florida family. And we need you, if God is calling, to come and help us dream and dream again. But it's not just one state. God has brought the nations to us all across this world to come to our states, to our neighborhoods, and to our communities. And we must dream again about what it means to reach them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Shuttered dreams, shattered dreams, shallow dreams. I'm just a 65-year-old preacher today based on what this scripture says, calling me and calling you to dream again. To dream again about reaching our cities and communities for Christ. To, to dream again about leading men and women and boys and girls to faith in Jesus Christ and that we're filling our baptistries every Sunday, not just once a month or once a quarter, but every Sunday and people are walking through and they're publicly professing their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and we're rejoicing and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To dream again about discipling believers, to dream again about being on mission for Christ, to dream again about planting churches and replanting churches and revitalizing churches will you today make a commitment to the Lord I will dream again and Lord may this be the generation that changes the world to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ father thank you thank you that we have seen people who have been through hard times and yet your hand upon them allowed them to dream and dream again you are faithful to us O oh Lord May we be found faithful to you. Lord, I thank you for every person in this room today, for your calling unto salvation, for your calling unto the commitment of their life and ministry, and may we take up the cross daily and follow you. And Lord, may we not be afraid to dream again. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.